Hello, beta testers. Gotham Knights approaches in less than 15 days. And boy, is it looking Marvel's Avengers. As usual, there's no shortage of stationary, a-posing enemy combatants waiting their turn because maybe only three or so can engage at a time. And that's pretty sad for a 2022 game because even though shells and fanboys want to screech, It's not an Arkham game. It's not trying to be Arkham. Different doesn't always mean better. Ask Saints Row if you're confused. You cannot fault the consumer for having functional eyes and also a little bit of a sensitivity to cringe these days, what with Saints Row forespoken. And honestly, when a punk rock cover of Ricky Martin's Living La Vida Loca is supposed to punctuate your scene, of course we're all going to laugh at you developers. This is a demonstration of what you consume bleeding into the product. Even CW show enthusiasts are self-aware enough to class it as a guilty pleasure. I used to watch Supernatural in the early days when it felt like a teen X-Files successor, but I'm self-aware enough to know that when people bring up Jensen Ackles, it's not because of Dean Winchester. The lack of self-awareness is important to address because it poisons this game on a lot of levels. As a consumer, it's highly amusing listening to these games journalists try their best to preserve their access by not saying anything mean, but when you're forced to say something and you're still fighting it. Yeah, I will say the combat uh, was a little off-putting at first because it felt a little more, I hate to use slower because I don't know if that's right. It just felt less snappy. Less snappy. Like, unresponsive, you know? Maybe that got in the way of the developer's creative vision, giving players the ability to have uh, something respond when they press a button, you know? I mean, what, are you trying to make a video game out there? Who would want that? Less snappy than the Arkham games because I the, uh, the animations are they're, they're just very animated. You know, you hit, like, a punch, and then Nightwing will do, like, a whole flip kick thing. Long. That's what he wants to say. The animations are long. Everybody loves that. Long animations. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Give me so put can I have can I have two servings of that, please? And so <laughs> it wasn't like I couldn't just like go nuts on people with the same pacing that I could the Arkham games. Okay. I because the pace of the Arkham games is faster. Got it. Decade old game better than this one. But I kind of agree with some of those shells whose biggest talking point will be, this isn't an Arkham game, it's not trying to be an Arkham game. And I agree, you know, I think it should be judged as a video game, and what we're seeing is shit. So the comedy is that it's asking the same price that the Arkham game did 10 years ago for something objectively higher quality than this. That's what that Saints Row bitch that was calling people a terrorist didn't understand. We don't measure products by how hard the people worked on it. We measure it by quality, bovine. But if I may be so blunt and typical Kyle fashion, like and subscribe, Gotham Knights is like if you took all the good parts out of Arkham and jammed in looter, live service type bullshit in its place. You know, some, some, some Ubisoft interfaces. And hilariously, I've been hearing this sentiment echoed. But like reinterpreted through the lens of an RPG that's got like these almost like games as service hooks, if you know what I mean. Like the way that a destiny feels and the way that those kind of like almost, I know sacrilege to make this comparison, but like the Avengers game feels. So forgive me for spotlighting enemies snapping into a pose to receive takedowns, something that I knew wasn't going to be fixed. Look at this person smacking in the back, but because they're in the middle of the takedown, I guess they just don't receive damage. Things like this, the ugly city, the uh, I, I, they demonstrate a lack of polish and make it abundantly clear. The money didn't go somewhere else. It's just not worth what it's asking. The amount of times I was hearing people repeating voice lines back to back, boy. <laughs> You gotta work harder. 
Jesus Christ, man, while they're working out. It's like you'd expect to hear that at a normal gym where there's a bunch of people and they don't get to choose. But at an intimate gym with you and your niggas, this is what you choose in to listen to. You don't have a playlist for a workout that's that's a little less normy than this. Here's where I'm coming from, man. I'm not a cruel guy. Of course, I realize that DC deserves their own Marvel's Avengers just as much as uh, the Marvel kids do. But as a gamer, I feel that everybody deserves better than Marvel's Avengers. And if I were put up against a wall and asked, do I think this is going to be as bad? Hell nah. You know, there, there are screenshots that I could put on screen right now that let me know on a fundamental level, this is not as stupid <laughs> or out of touch as Marvel's Avengers, no. And I'm sure it will provide an amusing um, couple of hours for some fans who simply want nothing more than to walk around as Batgirl or Red Hood and more power to them. But the expectation cannot be that we are uh, expected not to call things as they are. Gotham Knights is slow. Mike Stoklasa, uh, as Harry Plinkett, a character of his, has said in the past, you may not have noticed it. But your brain did. Here is the game at 1.25 speed. Tell me if it looks a little more normal, a little more organic, maybe within the ballpark of what a superhero should be moving like. When you see it like this and you go back, you go, why is it so slow? Because the other speed is what we might consider normal. So the question becomes why? And we know the answer. But the truth of the matter is, this next-gen-only game that started development with last-gen in mind isn't just restrained by last-gen technology. It's in a chokehold because of the incompetence and lack of familiarity with this engine demonstrated by the developers. But they're really, really psyched about, yeah, I guess, their modern takes on things. These people seem to be more enthusiastic about writing and their lukewarm designs that have of course are going to get certain demographics cheering and going yeah like a games journalist let me play this clip. i just need to put in a quick clip right here of this amazing massive russian godmother woman that i fought in the prison because she's incredible so just enjoy this she's looking up. i did indeed enjoy that oh, isn't wow. she amazing she's so buff i love her so much what isn't she amazing believe it or not the average gamer whom you need to sell well to for your game to succeed isn't jizzing their pants over boring sub-bosses with no character, especially when the fights in your toned-down experience go like this. To games journalists, Oh my god, buff lady, to be honest, these designs are litty, fam, not gonna lie, on god. Any hater who disagrees can touch grass. This is hella cool design. CEO of Fat Lady Thirst. <laughs> it's weird how Twitter's culture tries to make calling out cringe mean, but let me tell you something about reality. <sighs> I don't think you have enough money to properly block it out. Sorry. What's my impression on Gotham Knights almost 10 days away from its launch? It sucks my balls. Okay. Yeah, tell me how you feel about it in the comments. On a fundamental level, I found Gotham Knights combat to be very flashy, but also kind of bland. Fights quickly started to feel very routine, with very similar enemies in every encounter, to the point where I felt like I had to mix up my tactics, not because I was being forced to, but just to try to make things a little more interesting. 